I just got back from a flight that I was unable to land due to high winds. Now I was just told I need to go on a medical flight out to Gama. Let's get fueled, get out of here. Tupla Sik Merina, Tupla Wasman. Okay, all right, thanks. Yep. All right, we've got four passengers. I'm just gonna get fuel. I'm just gonna do quick and easy my IFR reserve back here. So 480 landing back here. I need 740 pounds. I've already got, let's see, 740. I landed here with 490. All right, Gibson, 73 aside. 73, 73. So 140, 146. Yeah. One plus sleep. Oh, okay. All right, so I've got three passengers. Uh, I think two sick people, one sick lady, pregnancy problems, and then two watch papas, basically two people that are coming out with them. So we're gonna get fueled. We gotta get two more seats back there, or at least one more seat, and then figure out what I'm gonna do for having her come out, uh, being able to lay down. In a you can one more seat, low kilo. By me installing a uh, med pack too. One plus sick medi sablo gamer. All right, I decided to go ahead and install the med pack just because she is probably gonna have to lay down or at least sit down in a little more comfortable area. Gamer is a really bumpy, I think it's like a max slope of 19%. So it's like a proper mountain downhill strip. So we're gonna fuel, I'm gonna push this back into the hangar, get the med pack in there and then be on my way. It's like 20 minutes is all. So I still have to go file too. Okay, here is our med pack. We're gonna throw that in. It probably takes about 10 minutes or so. It's not really that hard. We'll take out the rest of these seats out here so it'll just go along the side over there. But I figured, you know, if it was my wife that I was be flying out, I know that they would probably appreciate it, especially if they're having complications with pregnancy, things like that. So let's get that thrown in. I'm fueled. I still need to go file and then I'm ready to go. I am filed, I am fueled. We've got all the seats in there, nothing else to do. So let's get out of here on a 20 minute flight to Gama. A beautiful 19% sloped hill. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Fuel's both on, everything's back where I want it. Low start, energy's coming up as normal. Oil pressure's coming up as normal. I'll do a low idle over 14% NG. is over 35 now we're looking up the ITT we're just a hot start but oh God all right this hook takes that out of here I can get my generator on alternator pressure prop forward once my generator and alternator amps start going down we'll throw my aux bus on so we can get the airflow through here get my flaps down to 20 for takeoff 740 pounds of fuel on board. All right, we're on our nav page. We're going out to Gamma and coming straight back. We're going out at 9,000 feet. I'll throw that in here for now. 740 pounds of fuel, which just gets us back here with our IFR reserves, 480 pounds. My weight and balance. Let's go ahead and put in our um, med pack setup right here. And we're also gonna be putting in another seat there because we've got three pass well, four passengers total. Maybe if they have coffee out there, I'll get some coffee as well. That will help um, just fill up the rest of the airplane. Go ahead and hit depart. Everything looks good. We'll hit send. Roka Tower, November Tango Kilo request. Taxi Gamer 1 POB. Uh, November Tango Kilo, clear taxi 1 to left. Back to line up QNH 1018. 1018, clear to backtrack line up 17 left. November Tango Kilo. November 10 kilo traffic, Alpha November Hotel, Fokker 100, inbound from Mosley by Ombog. 
We're going to change from flight level 280, estimating local 41. Copy about traffic, no vermiculum. Alpha, uh, no motel, I go ahead to push in the stage. Uh, we want three miles and uh, tracking to intercept the one zero mile uh, final. Uh, no more hotel, Roger. Call again for miles. Off the hotel. No more ten kilo. One ray, one seven left, left ten clear for takeoff. One seven left, left turn clear for takeoff. No over ten kilo. Addition flaps twenty two on harnesses. Here we go. All right, torque is set. Airspeed's alive. There's fifty. There's rotate. Oh, we've got a big airplane coming in on final here shortly. He's still like 10,000 feet, 13 miles. So we're going to be well out of his way because I'm actually kind of going over that way. Won't be an issue. Yeah, I'm seeing him now on the screen. Let's just go ahead. For his sake, we'll go ahead and turn out now. Over 90, we'll go zero degrees of flaps. Tower, no, Tango Kilo departed time 37 and left hand turn now to track 147 on climb 9000 estimating at Gamma 56. Alpha November Hotel, copy the November Tango Kilo, we have you visual and we are lining our final runway 35 left. November Tango Kilo, copy departure. One five, much contact motion, one two zero, this whole channel, six six two two. Two zero seven six six two two one five. No big halo. All right, six six two two. Get that set up. Or one two zero decimal seven. Go ahead, bring our prop on back now. Alpha, no more hotel. Question, best strike. One three five left. Get ready to cross. Good left three five left and turn across uh, three five right. Half another hotel. Now looking at the clouds just ahead of us. It looks like the clouds are right at the 9,000 foot level. Kind of the way I can tell that is looking at these mountains, where the clouds are. That mountain's 12,000, it's below them. The mountain ahead of me is 8,000 feet, and it's not too much higher above that. So, in light of that, when we call it Moors, we will just say we'll be below 9,000, and I'll just probably head out at 8,500 feet, just so I can stay underneath of those. I think we do have one of our helicopters heading back this way here shortly on the exact same track. So we've done, we can do a cleanup, lights off, engine inlet back to normal, and igniters. November Tango Alpha, speed traffic is November Tango Kilo, Kodiak, departed Gorkoff again, minus 138. Minus 1000, again, minus 158. All right, you guys can see, it's a little bit bumpy out here right now, and it's only 10 knots. I did a flight out to Dinungit this morning, I didn't film it, I probably should have, but I didn't film it just because I went out there last Friday and I was like, ah, I don't need to film another one. I ended up not even landing because the winds were so strong and the turbulence was so strong in the circuit. On downwind, I think I had 20 knots of headwind, which would mean 20 knots of crosswind or probably would have dropped off a little bit for final, but it's a super tight circuit. And I had 1,100 foot-pounds of torque and I was completely empty, which is normally I'd be at 300 foot-pounds of torque. So just to maintain altitude kind of gives you an idea how much winds were there. Our speed's already well up, so let's go ahead and bring our torque on back to 1250 for cruise. It's like this where it's just a constant. Now we're up to 22 knots here. Really is like 10,000 foot marker is really where the whip and winds are. So, but this channel right here, it's kind of a little bit of a, a venturi. The winds are coming this way, the mountains are on each side, and it kind of just speeds it all up right right through this channel out to Denungit. Okay, there you go for your visual guys. That's where we're heading out to. We're already a third of the way out there almost. We just took off, so it's autopilot off. It just can't quite keep up with the turbulence today. Once we get up to this ring right here, you guys can see this little dotted line. That's the end of Garoka's airspace. I'm probably not going to get him on 1207, so I'm just going to try him on 6622 first for HF radio. Because I just heard them. Morsby 6622, November Tango, Kilo. 
November Tango Kilo, Mosby, go ahead. November Tango Kilo, 1-5 miles to the south of Garoka, below 900,000, estimating Gamma. Time 5-6. Probably tell me about the helicopter, I'm guessing. November Tango Kilo, Eric UNH 1006, traffic is November Tango Alpha, 7766, departed PNG for Garoka, that's at Garoka 0100. Copy company, no vapor tango kilo. All right. Oh, it's zero zero six, no vapor kilo. Hey, Josh, up on company. <laughs> hey, I'm just over top directly of uh, Mount Canabiga. Uh, Five hundred. And I will maintain on the east side of the valley going into Gamma. All right, copy that. Yeah, I've got about um, eight miles to go until I, I've got you on ADSB. Um, I got about uh, 10 miles to go to the Garoka airspace. I'm currently at uh, 10,800, just kind of sitting on top of the clouds here, um, just for a smoother ride. Uh, clear skies in Garoka still, yeah? Yeah, and I'm at uh, 7,600. Yeah, you'll have no problem getting out there. Where are you going, Gamma? Hey, firm. Yeah, you'll have no problem getting out there underneath. Um, it's just a little bit choppy um, when I'm lightweight, so I decided to come on top, so. Okay, cool, see you later. Well, he's definitely right. It's a little choppy underneath. When uh, The turbulence is typically, underneath the clouds is a lot more turbulent than on top of the clouds, that's for sure. Especially when you're right at the level of just underneath of them like I am today. So, we don't have too much time left in this flight, so let's head over to the arrival tab. We're gonna be landing on runway 20. It's a one-way airstrip into the side of a mountain. It's a 7% touchdown slope in the touchdown area, 470 meters long. And what we wanna do is we wanna touch down and then get heavy on the brakes and then add power in back up the hill because you, can, you guys can see down here at the bottom, it's a 19% slope at the top of the hill. So it's very undulating on the way up, very, very rough. So I wanna stop as soon as I can, well not stop, but slow down a lot on the way up the hill so that when I'm hitting all those bumps a third of the way into the runway, it doesn't kick my nose wheel up and have a tail strike. Other than that, you guys can see, here's a nice little drone picture of it. It's a beautiful place. I've always loved going here. This is one of my first Class C airstrips that was checked out into the Highlands back in 2015. Yeah, like nine years ago. If you're wondering, who's paying for this flight? I believe the health department for the Eastern Highland Province, I believe that they have gifted this flight for this lady out here. So, pregnancy complications, don't know all the details, but it sounds like it's pretty serious if she does not get out um, and have some surgery. Hey Ryan, I'm just a couple miles south of Tarabo. I'm coming out of uh, 10,000 on descent. We have you on ADSB, should be no factor. All right, got you in TCAS, see you later. Okay, so what we can do is I can put my terrain on here. Doesn't really quite show it yet because I'm not quite low enough, but the clouds ahead of me are forcing me down lower and lower. But I'm gonna be traveling up this lighter area to get into Gamma. So basically down below, and then I can just start seeing how I'm gonna be traveling. And typically I don't use the terrain unless it's an area that I don't know, or if, it's, if there's so many clouds and I'm not really familiar with where I'm at, then I'll throw it on. But uh, this particular route I've flown hundreds of times and so I know where all the mountains look like and all these different things. So this just kind of clutters it up for me. I like just to be able to see the colors of the hills and the low spots just by signifying with the lo like the lighter area. My goodness. I think I might go up higher on the way back too because I don't want to have to have sick passengers on the way back. The people we fly for typically don't fly around here so the lady I'm flying out, probably her first time ever on an airplane, so hopefully it can be a better experience than this kind of turbulence. And stay tuned to the end, I'll do a time lapse back to the end. Everybody seems to love those. I kind of like them too. I actually thought about maybe starting a different a second channel, just doing like time lapses and things like that with some nice relaxing music. As just something to play in the background kind of thing. So if you guys are interested in something like that, leave a comment down below. 
probably wouldn't be that hard for me to put together some of those, so. Although I'm not really seeing too many holes that I could even get on top. There's a, some light patches. What I mean by that is lights shining on the ground up there, which would indicate that there's some holes, that that's where the light's shining down. So there's a hole over there, but everything else is fairly uniformly shadowed with just some really tiny stuff. And that's an indication that it's kind of a pretty thick overcast, or at least seven eighths broken. Probably that nah, looks more. It looks just like an overcast to me. Well, let's go ahead and get my landing performance here. 62 knots for my approach. If I can hit the buttons <laughs> with the turbulence. Okay, VRF is done. We'll turn our taws off. Our selectors are both on, our fuel selectors. Our brakes feel nice and firm. Lights and inlet, we'll throw those on. Oh, and we're landing runway two zero, so we'll OBS runway two zero. There we go. And now looking at kind of where that shadow was, I don't see any open spots at all. Josh just came out from like just a few miles from Gamma, so he must have found some holes. I don't see anything though. No worries. You got see this one dark area. I may just put it on the terrain so you can see a little bit easier. That little yellow line right there. I've got to go around that on my descent down into Gamma. We want to be entering into our circuit at. Gamma, 6,300 feet, pattern altitude, turning final, 5,700, crossing the ridge. Now, on this one, because it's such a steep slope, I tend to sag on the last half or last third of the approach. It all looks fine, my numbers are looking good, but then as you get closer, because it's such a steep hill, it so naturally you're like, man, I'm getting close. I feel super high. I Caution, need to down. terrain. Caution, terrain. Thank you. So you zoom down and then as you get close, you're like, oh man, now I'm too low. And then you kind of drag it in at like 300 feet per minute. So, and by that point you're already committed. So I'm gonna try really hard to not droop my approach into here. Lights and inlet, if we have to go around, it's power up 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 12 degrees on the attitude indicator and a hard left hand turn out, resetting our ITT because we're over 5,000 feet. Up and harness, we'll get here in just a minute. 500. All stations, Gamma 1207, Kodiak November Tango Kilo, 8 miles to the northwest, 6,000 for Gamma, estimating Gamma time. Three seven. So I'm going to check the wind sock as I fly over. Got 14 knots of wind coming this way, so there's some potential of swirling wind because it's down in there. That's really what I'd be more concerned about is kind of what is it doing on my whole, like my whole final. Is it just because I turned final and there's no wind doesn't mean that there won't be some wind when I get 500 feet lower. Uh, sprinkles on the windshield. It is raining on final, and I won't be able to land just because it's a sloped runway. So hopefully it's not raining. I can take off with rain, but I can't land with rain because it's you're going so slow. The wind's not pushing off the raindrops, and they just sit on the windshield and then mess up your vision and also just like your sight picture and things like that. So it can be really dangerous to be landing with water. Not necessarily water, with it actually raining, like that right there. See what I mean? You've got these water droplets going up. Your vision is obscured. Moresby six six two two November Tango Kilo in the circuit game. I report after landing. November Tango Kilo. All right. So it looks like it's kind of just going in and out. So we've got some rain over there and kind of in the downwind area. It doesn't concern me right here. It's kind of just misting in and out. 
So doesn't look like there's rain on the final, so that's that's what we're gonna hope for. All right, let's go 10 degrees of flaps. Up in harness, we'll do harness uh, turning final. Oh, there's good rain right here though. <laughs> All right, right over top of the field. Winds are zero on the ground. That is, I mean, blocked by a hill, so how accurate is that? Hey, rain pretty good right here. I mean, it's only a sprinkle, but it's enough to mess it all up. Go 20 degrees of flaps, start slowing on down. Turn it downwind now. This one is basically a downwind to a final. There's not really a base, it's just a 180 and then you're on the final. We want 57 across that hill. Ah, uh, shoot, it's raining here. Doesn't mean it will be raining though on, fi on final though, so we'll keep continuing until we have to go around. Got enough fuel that I can do a few circuits here. Fast and high, we're gonna go a little bit further out. There's full flaps. About 57 for that hill, we've got 300 to go, so let's go ahead and start turning now. nine knots up here just around those two trees that are poking up that's a good place for me to aim for my final at 5700 still a little bit fast all right finals looking clear seven knots of headwind 65 knots shoot down for 64 there's 5600 actually for across this ridge I think Brad and, 500. I came, Brad and I came in here just last week, and I think that's actually what we need to change because 56 feels a little bit better. 550 on the descent. Wind for those first cones in. Uh, six knots headwind, four knot crosswind, no rain. Coming up on my committed. Three knots crosswind, six knots headwind. 700 of the descent, so I'm going to actually level off a tiny bit. 500. I want to keep going down that fast. All right, there we go. That's better. All right. We've got a couple of drops, but we're now committed. Now, of course, it's going to start raining more. Uh, just like I said. You can still see good, though. Let's go low idle. Wow, this is rough. Uh, it's not even sprinkling now. It's that 100 meters. Just pushing the yoke over so my nose stays down on the ground. Pull forward far enough so that my tail stand can go in. I don't hit my wing over there. There we go. It's not even sprinkling here now. It was just that 100 meters on short final after committed. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and load up my patience and get out of here. Um, I'll do a time lapse back, so make sure you check that out. And if you guys want to uh, check out a really cool book that I made for you guys, coffee table book, actually has places like Gama, like this, has a little bit about like the airstrip itself, a little bit about the culture, things like that. So go check out this on my website, pick one up, be a great conversation piece. See you guys next time.